Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Professor Alexandros Zografos. Alex studied chemistry at the National University of Athens before pursuing his PhD at the National Technical University of Athens, where he worked on the synthesis of biologically active quinolins in the group of Professor Olga Iglesi Markopoulou. He subsequently worked as a postdoc in the Baron Group at Scripps and completed the total synthesis of the alkaloid natural products, septrin and agelopherin. Afterwards, he worked as a postdoc at Athens University in the group of Professor Dimitris Georgiadis on the total synthesis of abyssomycin C and related targets. Following that, he worked as a senior researcher at Columbia University with Professor Scott Snyder, where he completed several resveratrol natural product syntheses. He then returned to Greece to work with Dr. Dionysus Volumus at NCSR Democritus Institute on an RNA-based project. Since 2008, he's been at Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, where he's currently Associate Professor of Organic Chemistry. And with that, I'll let you get started, Alex. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Matt, for the kind introduction and for the opportunity to present part of our work on Synthesis Workshop. Before starting my talk, which is focused on the development of novel organocatalysts promoting aerobic oxidative processes, I would like to give you a small introduction on the need this project addressed and why we forced to initiate it. As you might be aware, the main focus of our group is the total synthesis of natural products, and more specifically their divergent or collective total synthesis. The main goal is to develop a route for total synthesis of not just one natural compound, but instead a variety of natural products on the same or different subfamilies. In order to achieve this goal, a common retrosynthetic analysis for whole families of natural compounds is needed. Usually, a good starting point in this process is the biosynthetic origin of the family. Let me give you a quick example on the divergent total synthesis of sesquiterpenoid lactone family that we are recently pursuing. Biosynthetic analysis of sesquiterpenoid lactones leads to phanylsyl diphosphate as the common precursor of the family. This precursor passes through two distinct phases, the cyclase phase, in which pharmaceutical glyphosphate cyclizes to germocrans and elements, and the oxidase phase, where these carbocyclic codes are stereospecifically decorated with allylic hydroxyls and epoxides. A second round of cyclase and oxidase phase is further enriching the diversity of the family, with carbocyclic codes of udesmans, guéans, cadenans and lindenans, in various oxidation states and in various positions, as shown by the different grey and colour dots on the carbocycles. Although our group was efficient to mimic the cyclase phase, achieving the synthesis of diverse carbocycles by utilising a common static intermediate, we were rather poor to address the high chemoselectivity of the oxidase phase. This drawback initiated our project on the development of an efficient oxidation protocol to address it. Once again, our focus turns on the biosynthesis of these molecules and how nature achieves to oxidize them. Nature uses monoxygenases as part of the oxidase phase. Monoxygenases are usually cofactor dependent enzymes that are harnessing the oxidation potential of dioxygen to oxidize various substrates. They can be roughly divided in two main classes, those that are using metals and those that are metal free. In most cases, though, monoxygenases are associated with NADPH reductases and cofactors, which are acting as mediators of electrons from the reductants to the terminal oxidant, which is molecular oxygen. During this process, the substrates are monoxygenated accordingly. Metal free monoxygenases are commonly associated with cofactors as riboflavins and pterins while metal-dependent monoxygenases are associated with heme, iron and copper-dependent cofactors. It is important to notice, though, that monoxygenases where a complete absence of cofactors are evidenced. Let's give our focus on the flavin-dependent monoxygenases. These are relying in the peculiar heterocyclic cause of flavins, shown in blue. The reduced form of the heterocycle is able to activate molecular oxygen through semiquinone to peroxiflavin, a nucleophilic species which is responsible for useful transformation in nature, such as the oxidation of phenols, Bayer-Williger oxidation, etc. On the other hand, abstraction of a proton leads to hydroperoxyl flavins, 
an electrophilic species which are able to oxidize electron-rich substrates as heteroatoms. Cleavage of the hydroperoxy bond by substrate oxidation leads to the hemiamine alcohol of hydroxyflavin, which is readily reduced by NADH reductases to recycle the active catalyst. This established catalytic performance of flavins led to the development of synthetic variants that are able to provide Bayer-Williger and Dyking oxidation, but also heteroatom oxidations in the presence of various reducing agents such as zinc, hydrazine, Hansester, and many others. Most importantly, in some cases, the development of asymmetric catalysts is feasible and highlighted by their performance usually in the bayer williger reaction. In contrast to flavin-dependent monoxygenases, the cofactor independent monoxygenases are rather unexplored. One might hypothesize in these cases that the active center of the enzymes or the substrate itself might act as activator of the oxygen to initiate the oxidative processes, but no evidence is so far available. Willing to fill this knowledge gap, we initiated exploring literature for examples where amino acids or peptides act as activators of dioxygen. A pioneer work from Miller Group showed that aspartyl-based catalysts are able to perform stereoselective oxidations in high yields, though with the aid of hydrogen peroxide, which forms the active oxidant in the form of aspartyl peroxide. A closer example to our hypothesis was found from the stoichiometric use of phenyl-activated amino acids as promoters for R relation of amino acids. In this case, phenyl-activated amino acids were found to directly produce a hydroperoxy species that are responsible for a relation. Also under the same logic, it was found that 2,5-diketropyperazines are able to produce stabilized radicals with the aid of strong oxidants to cross-couple varines. Most importantly, the same heterocycles stoichiometrically activate dioxygen to oxidize phosphines to phosphine oxides. This example showcased the ability of amino acid derivatives to activate dioxygen and initiate oxidative processes, though only in stoichiometric reactions. To enhance our hypothesis, a catalytic protocol needed to be explored. Thus, we sought for organic catalysts able to activate dioxygen and allow the oxidation of different substrates such as phenols, alkenes, heterocycles and others in a process that can mimic cofactor independent monoxygenases. Based on the literature, screening of amino acids on a simple reaction setting seems to be ideal for initiating the project. Screening of amino acid or derivatives on the stoichiometric aerobic oxidation of dibenzyl sulfides revealed pyrrolproline diketopiperazine DKP as a good candidate for the development of catalytic aerobic processes. DKP was able to aerobically oxidize dibenzyl sulfides in DMF in excellent yield. What is more, differentiation of either the pyrrole ring or the proline ring allows fine tuning of its oxidation potential and the ability for enantioselective pure mediators. It needs to be pointed out that the reaction is highly chemoselective for the synthesis of sulfoxides and does not allow its further oxidation to sulfone. A closer look on reaction behavior reveals interesting facts for DKP mediator. Mixing pyrrole proline diketopiperazine with dioxygen in DMF in the absence of sulfides allows to monitor the active oxidant of hydroperoxyl DKP species by proton NMR. Formation of hydroperoxide is possible only when polar solvents are used, with the reaction kinetics being very slow with solvent as acetonitrile and DCM. This hydroperoxide species in the presence of sulfide directly leads to sulfoxide and the hemiaminal of the DKP, resembling the behavior of flavin derivatives in oxidative processes. On the other hand, hydroperoxide species that left without nucleophilic partner decarboxylates two imides and two proline cleavates highlighting the ability of superoxide intermediate to act as an active nucleophile. Masking the inner form of pyrrole proline decadopiperazine directly holds the oxidative processes, proving the direct correlation of phenol to initiate dioxygen activation. Another fact is that enantiomerically pure derivatives of DKP 
lead to enantiomerically enriched hydroperoxides, allowing the potential usage of DKP for asymmetric oxidation. Monitor the kinetics of oxidation reaction in the presence of various reductants allows the development of a catalytic process when Hansester and HFIP were used. Monitoring this process is possible by the incorporation of deuterium in DKP. Mixing labeled derivatives with dioxygen and asulfide in the presence of Hansester and HFIP leads to exchange of deuterium for proton and vice versa. Utilization of deteriorated Hansestern reaction mixture leads to deteriorated DKP. It needs to be pointed out that HFIP is essential to achieve the reduction step as it was found that the reduction in different solvent is inadequate due to the basic profile of more polar solvents. Another useful fact is that DKP is readily oxidized to hydroperoxide under basic conditions and that DKP can directly oxidize Hansester in the absence of substrates. Finally, full consumption of reductant leads to decomposition of the catalyst, so the fine-tuning of solvent reductant parameters are crucial for the successful oxidation. Based on these facts, we developed a catalytic protocol for the oxidation of sulfides to sulfoxides utilizing 10 mol percent of DKP catalysts with one equivalent of Hansester in HFIP at ambient temperature. The method provides good to excellent yields of products and tolerates a large range of substituents such as halogens, amine, carboxylic acids, terminal alkenes and others. More electron-rich substrates provide higher yields of products compared to electron deficient. The mechanism of the process is postulated to resemble the way flavin mediators are activating dioxygen. The reduced form of DKP reacts with dioxygen to form nucleophilic peroxy species, which in the absence of substrates collapse to decarboxylation and producing the observed imides and carboxylic acids. Abstraction of a proton forms electrophilic hydroperoxyl species that are active oxidants of the process. Oxidation of substrates leads to hemiaminal, which is readily reduced under the acidic environment of HFIP to regenerate the catalyst. Additional acidic environment for reduction step is not compatible with the first step of activation of deoxygen, which requires the stabilization of phenol form to initiate the process. Building on this logic, an expansion of the aerobic oxidative protocol was envisioned to allow the oxidation of alkenes to epoxides or allylic alcohols. Slight modification of reaction conditions is able to allow the epoxidation of alkenes in good to excellent yields. As part of epoxidation protocol, we sought for an even deeper exploration on reaction mechanism. Asymmetric reaction with optical pure catalysts return only minor enantioselectivities that do not correlate with the observed enantioselectivities of formed hydroperoxides. Screening different batches of Hansester return various asymmetric inductions. Further exploration revealed a dual dioxygen activation by DKP and Hansester that can be halted with pyridine and water to allow dioxygen activation just by DKP opening the draw for enantioselective oxidations. Epoxidation provides good to excellent yields of products, even at substrates bearing different alkyl functionalities. This interesting behavior can be highlighted by the complete absence of reactivity for alkenes of allylic alcohols and for terminal alkenes. Accounting on these characteristics, we might say that our method is complementary to existing methods as MCBBA and Sartre's epoxidation protocols. Further investigation on the compatibility of DKP promoted oxidation with metals or selenium dioxide allowed to diverse our method from the epoxidation of alkenes to the allylic oxidation. More specifically, addition of catalytic amount of selenium dioxide in the previous developed aerobic protocol allows the formation of selenium hydroperoxyl species that are able to oxidize the allylic position of alkenes similarly to the well-established Sartre's allylic oxidation mechanism. This new powerful synthetic protocol provides high yields of products, especially in cases of terminal alkenes where Sartre's allylic oxidation returns low yields due to overoxidation. 
The higher yields observed by our method can be attributed to the utilization of HFIP that seems to hold over-oxidized pathways, probably by hydrogen bonding interactions with formed allylic alcohols. Our future directions in the field are focused on the development of aerobic protocols utilizing DKP catalysts to achieve the aerobic oxidative coupling of phenols and the formation of aryl ethers chemoselectively, allowing an entry into the world of polyphenolic natural products. Preliminary studies in our group show that this task is feasible as DKP promoted oxidative process was found compatible with an array of redox active metals. Closing this spotlight episode, I would like to thank my group former and current members for their enormous efforts to achieve these high risk, high gain goals. I would like also to thank our funding agencies and of course you Matt for giving me the opportunity to present our work in Synthesis Workshop. Thank you for joining us for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Alex for coming on to share your group's work. If you enjoy the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.